buy some senior players in and uh, stay around that final five or six as we did the season before that. Um, but that's a pretty short term measure. So we decided to go long term and recruit the best group of youngsters that we could find and teach them to be better and take our bruises in yeah. the short term. And we got bruised in the short term. <laughs> but towards the end of the season, uh, you met all of the top teams, Perth, Adelaide, Canberra. You performed pretty creditably towards the end of the season. Well, we beat Adelaide at home in the second last game, which was the first time Newcastle's beaten them in the, uh, in the franchise's history. And then we finished the season off by beating Sydney when they were in, uh, in third position. So I think we found the last eight games of the season we won four and lost four. And, uh, you know, the losses were two overtime, a two-pointer and a three-pointer. So the team was very competitive at the end. Talking about your youngsters, uh, one that came through, I think, with flying colours and I think may even take out the National Basketball League Rookie of the Year is Neil Turner. I think Neil had an outstanding season considering uh, he missed three games earlier with, uh, when he had a badly broken nose. But uh, he's the first Australian in memory that's led the league in shot blocking. I believe he's won that uh, award uh, uh, from Willie Simmons and, uh, in Canberra. So that's an outstanding achievement. I can't remember an Australian ever finishing in the first ten in shot blocks in the National League. So to do that in your first season is a good sign. And right at the end, young Kruger came on quite well. And uh, Peter Harvey, I thought, ended up very strongly too. You going to stay with the policy of youth? Yes, we are. I think uh, we've made our commitment. We, we feel we need another big player. We, we'd really like to bring in another senior player of around about the 6, 10 or 7 foot mark. And uh, if we get that, we'll be in good shape. But we really need another big man. We're having a look on the screen now, Ken. Uh, your match against Canberra it was uh, an exciting game. Uh, they got away with the match in the second half after you performed so brilliantly in the first half. Canberra, of course, uh, going against North Melbourne for the finals this weekend. How do you see it all going? Well, we stayed with Canberra. I think we led them at three-quarter time, and uh, they shot something like 90% on us in the fourth quarter to get away with the win, and I thought it was a really high-quality game. Uh, it's a little bit, bit like the football, you know. The, uh, the Canberra team were pretty much underrated in the football as far as their forwards went, um, and everybody thinks at this stage at North Melbourne will steamroll them in the forwards, where they are very powerful, but I don't know. The Canberra team has got a lot of good players up front too, and if they can uh, neutralise uh, to a certain degree the North Melbourne team up front, then Phil Smythe and the guards have got a chance to win it. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think, but I wouldn't bet against North Melbourne. Of course, Canberra have been embroiled in controversy with uh, the Steve Bruni and uh, Damien Keogh incident. As a case, you've been fairly outspoken in the National Basketball League for many years, and uh, you've been fairly forthright in your comments. What is your view on the, uh, the Steve Bruni, Damien Keogh incident? Now, just re refreshing our viewers' mm. uh, memories that Steve Bruni actually headbutted Damien Keogh and has since been suspended until May next year. Well, we've, uh, we've spoken to a lot of the coaches in the league to see if uh, we would feel that a, a penalty of a, a year and, and a $5,000 suspended type sentence over Bruni would have been a, a better way to go about it. And I think had Steve walked onto the court and hit the player, then, uh, then the penalty would have been uh, much more severe. I think the penalty at the moment is, uh, is, is stopping him uh, in the finals, and I don't know that... The, that it's gaining anything at all. I would have thought that uh, a year's bond uh, and any more infringement would see you out for a year with a substantial fine would have been a little bit of the best of both worlds on it because uh, uh, I think the player had to bear some of the blame for uh, virtually stepping almost on or over the sideline mm. and had a player jumped up and hit him, how severe would the penalty have been? I think that has to be taken into account. Had a coach stepped onto the playing surface and hit a player, we had an incident here last year where a player ran into me and uh, on the sideline um, from North Melbourne. And I got bumped over because there were people around us in the crowd. Well, that looked a lot worse than it was and uh, could have blown up into anything, but it was a, an accidental situation. We should forget about that and get on with uh, the National Basketball League oh, in yeah. general. Yeah, uh, yeah, it agree. did bring a little bit of a, a blight on the National Basketball League, but Ken, it really is the fastest growing sport in Australia, isn't it? Yes, it is. No, I think that the amount of publicity that it drew it, is just a symbol now of where the game's at and the fact that an incident can happen and crowd reaction and so forth. Uh, uh, the game is just growing at an, a monstrous rate still. And I, I, I think we're still at the lower part of the growth. I don't think we're anywhere near the middle of it yet. And I, I think, I mean, here we're trying to build a 5,000-seat arena and, and the day we walk into that, we're virtually guaranteed of a 10,000-seat arena two years after that. So um, Perth are trying to go up to 12 to 15,000 and uh, uh, Sydney, of course, are moving to the 10,000-seat arena. Adelaide are trying to build one of 8 to 10,000. Canberra are trying the same. So I can see that the growth factor that we're in at the moment, we're just scratching the surface still. It's ready to skyrocket. We just need more big Australian players. You are a man of predictions uh, very quickly. Your predictions for 1990? 
Uh, I think that we will find ourselves, we, we'll be disappointed if we don't make the finals next year, even with a very young team. And our goal is to win the championship within the next three-year period. Ken, thanks for coming in this morning and all the very best on your American tour. And uh, let's hope the youngsters uh, really gain some maturity on the tour. Well, that'll be invaluable to next season. I think it should give us a chance to start next season uh, stronger than we, we ended this one. And right after the break, action from the first game.